in your Bibles this evening to Romans chapter 14. Romans chapter 14. I want to just read one verse of scripture here and I do pray that uh, God will help us to think about a lot of the meanings that are contained in this uh, verse of scripture and that God will help us to begin to realize more and more that there are many, many different people in our lives that have influenced us, some for good, some for bad, but our lives have been touched by a lot of different people. The Word of God says in Romans 14 verse 7, For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. Uh, remember when I was in high school we had to learn a poem that said, No man is an island. No man is an island. We're all in one way or another, some more than others, but we're all connected and interconnected to a lot of different people. All during your life, there have been a lot of people that have, an in, have had an influence on your life. Your grandparents, if you had grandparents and you remember them, I know that my grandparents uh, on both sides, they had a profound influence on me for good. I, I still to this day have a lot of lessons that I learned from my grandparents. My parents greatly influenced my life. My daddy uh, was firm, but he did love me. I found out when I was 21, 22, I finally realized he did. But when I was growing up, I doubted that he loved me. But my mama always loved me. I always felt loved by my mother. And as I got older, I realized my daddy loved me at least as much as my mother did. I just didn't realize that. But my parents provided for me, and they provided for us everything that we needed, not everything we wanted, and I'm thankful they didn't. I think parents make a major mistake today. Whenever we're talking about no man liveth unto himself and no man dieth unto himself, I want you to know that that there are people that influence you and, and they can influence you for bad or they can influence you for good. And parents sometimes influence their children for bad by giving them too much. Letting them have their way. Making excuses for everything that they do that's wrong. The teachers are wrong. The law enforcement is wrong. Everybody's wrong except our children and our grandchildren. That's not the way it is. So we can be influenced, all of us can be influenced by other people and have been influenced by a lot of people. Even in high school, there were a lot of people that influenced me. I had, uh, I had some teachers, even in grammar school. I, I guess the two best teachers that I ever had, one was in the fourth grade, Ms. Max Swain. That was a wonderful teacher. She loved me. Uh, that was our first year in living in Yatesville, and I felt alone, and she would come by my desk, and she would just reach down and hug me. She would, uh, when we'd be having a test, she would come by my desk, and she would just point at a particular problem that I had missed, and then go back and look at that again. She helped me before school, she helped me after school. She was just a very loving Christian lady. And then after I started preaching, she would drive great distances sometimes to, to be there for me to, uh, to, to be there to worship God. But she was there to support me and to encourage me. My mother was my other best teacher. She, she taught me in the sixth grade. But I had teachers in high school. I had coaches in high school that influenced me for good. Right, I'm going to concentrate tonight on on how we have been all influenced by good by a lot of different people, family members, parents and grandparents, and, and teachers and pastors can be a, a great influence for good. Our companions, I know that my wife has been a tremendous influence for good. She has so many times has kept me from quitting the ministry. So many times she has encouraged me. So many times when I've been on the wrong track, she would get me back on the right track. Uh, influence, good influences are important in our lives. 
And I think that this past week as I've looked at this verse of scripture and thought about the fact that no man is an island and I began to reminisce and go back over all the different people that have had a great influence in my life. A lot of preachers, a lot of old preachers that are most all dead and gone except Brother McKinley Wright. He's 99 years old. Any of you ever have an opportunity to go visit with him? He can teach you a lot even though he's 99 years old. He has a lot of wisdom. So there are people that influence us for good. Now I don't have to I don't have to respond to that positive influence. I can go in another direction. There are people that will influence us for evil. All of you young people need to know and understand there are people that will lead you down a wrong path. There are adults that will lead you down the wrong path. There are teenagers that will lead you down the wrong path. There are other people that will lead you down. They will influence you, but they cannot make you go down the path that you go down. If you go down a wrong path, you can't blame it on, well, they had bad friends that influenced them to go the wrong way. If they were influenced by bad friends, it's because they didn't understand you don't need to be following those negative influences. So we've got positive influences and negative influences. We've got people that are always doing things that are for our good and uh, then we've got people that might not desire so much good in our lives. I want us to begin by backing up in uh, our Bibles. We'll go forward in your Bible to begin with. Let's look at what the Apostle Paul as he wrote to young young preacher Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 1. Look in your Bibles at 2 Timothy chapter 1 and the Word of God makes it very plain here that Timothy's mother and his grandmother and he emphasizes the grandmother the mother and the grandmother had a good positive influence on Timothy's life in 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 5 the word of God says Paul writing to Timothy and he says when I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee now what's Paul doing right there in that first statement in verse 5 he says you have great faith I look at your great faith. I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee. And then he goes on to say, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. So he's commending Timothy for the tremendous amount of faith that he had. And for his unfeigned faith, his sincere, genuine, godly faith, he's commending him for that. But he says, now I want to also remind you, Timothy, that faith was first seen in your grandmother and then it was also seen in your mother. I believe with all my heart, Timothy was a great man of God. He was a tremendous man of God. I believe Paul had a great influence on the young preacher Timothy. But I believe there was a foundation that was laid by Timothy's grandmother and Timothy's mother that had a, had a profound influence for good. And then when Paul came along and began to instruct him and teach him in many other ways much deeper maybe than his grandmother and mother had taught him. But they had helped establish in him that unfeigned, sincere, genuine faith in God. When children see their grandparents having strong faith in God, and they see their parents having strong faith in God, it's going to influence them for good for them to have strong faith in God. On the other hand, if they have parents and grandparents that don't have strong faith in God, it's probably going to influence them in that direction also. But let me immediately respond and tell you again, I've known people, I, my best friend in high school, his daddy was a drunkard. His daddy did not influence him to be a drunkard. I've seen people that wanted to blame their parents on them being a drunkard. I had a man tell me this week as he was talking about some faults that his son had, he said, you know, the apple just doesn't fall far from the tree. Well, he was making excuses, saying, well, this is the way I am, that's the way he is. You don't just accept evil influences. You don't just, and, and, and don't ever ever say, well you're, you couldn't help it. You couldn't help it because somebody influenced you. That best friend I had in high school, or one of the best friends I had in high school, his daddy was a drunkard. That man never, that friend of mine, 
Though some other people in high school did drink, he never drank. You know why? Because he said, I don't want to ever be like my daddy. I don't ever want to be like my daddy. He saw the kind of life he lived. He saw how his daddy uh, mis misused and hurt his mother. And he said, I don't want to ever lose control of what I'm doing by being drunk. You see? God gave that young man some wisdom. I don't want to be like my daddy. Now, I'll tell you honestly, there are a lot of ways I did want to be like my daddy. But there are some ways I didn't want to be like my daddy. If you're honest and you know a lot about your parents and you can be truthful about your parents, you know that they're not perfect. They're not all bad and they're not all good. And you can be influenced. You can look at their lives and you can say, now, these are some things, these are some qualities, these are some characteristics they have that are right and are good. And I want to follow that. I want to hold on to that. I want to develop that even more in my life. But the things that are not so good, we need to lay those things aside. So Timothy had a grandmother and a mother that had a profound influence. No man liveth unto himself and no man dieth to himself. Lots of people are influencing you in your life. Go with me back in your Bibles to Genesis chapter 18. And there are some statements made as you look at families in the word of God. And you look at the powerful influence that strong fathers and strong mothers have on their children and on their grandchildren. You probably remember that Joshua makes this statement. He says, as for me and my house. Oh, and my house. Not just as for me. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I believe Joshua was a strong man. I believe Joshua was the man that was going to require the people in his house. My daddy said this quite often. As long as you put your feet under my table, you'll do what I say. You'll abide by my rules. You'll follow what God says and you'll do what I say. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That's a responsibility that all of us have. If you're the head of your household, it is your responsibility to be sure that everybody that you're feeding and that you're providing shelter for, it's your responsibility to be sure they're following God and following God's word. That's your responsibility. Genesis chapter 18, look at verse 19 as we look about what the word of God, this is what God said about Abraham. It's not what Abraham said about himself, not what a friend of his said. This is what God said about Abraham in Genesis chapter 18 and verse 19. He says, for I know him, that's God saying, I know Abraham. I know him that he will command his children and his household after him and they shall keep the the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he hath spoken of him. God says, I know Abraham. And I know that, that Abraham is going to be sure that his children and his household, they're going to follow the word of God. They're going to know what the commandments of God are and he's going to enforce the commandments of God. God said, that's the kind of man Abraham is. I hope that all of you men will understand God has chosen you to be the spiritual head of your family. Christ is your head, and you're to be the head of your family, and you're to have a, a positive influence on your children and your grandchildren. Abraham was a man that pleased the Lord because he ruled his household well. Turn to the book of Acts. In Acts chapter 10, this is the first time the gospel of Jesus Christ was ever preached to the Gentiles. In Acts chapter 10, God, you're familiar with how God called Peter to go and to preach to the Gentiles. And he didn't want to go preach to them. He said they're unclean. And he gave them a vision of the sheep being let down from hev heaven that had animals clean and unclean. Bottom line is that Peter ended up going to the house of Cornelius and there's a reason that God chose Cornelius and his household. I want you to emphasize because as we're talking about these great men, I want you to know, understand, know and understand it's not just the man, it's not just the woman, 
but it's the influence they had on their children and their grandchildren and their families. And so in Acts chapter 10, the Word of God tells us about what kind of man Cornelius was. Acts chapter 10, listen to verses 1 and 2. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion, that means he was over a hundred men, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, a devout man. Now I want to back up just a minute to verse 1. He was a centurion. He was over a hundred men. You think he had an influence over those hundred men he was over in that army? Absolutely. He had a good influence in their life. He was a devout man. He was a godly man. So first I want you to know in this passage that it's emphasizing he was a devout man over the, those hundred men. And then the second verse says he was a devout man and one that feared God. Now look at the next expression. With all his house. Now Cornelius was a godly man. But all of his house was a house that feared God and served God and obeyed God. Remember the text in Romans 14, 7 says, No man liveth unto himself, and no man dieth unto himself. I'm having influence on a lot of different people. You are having influence on a lot of different people. All of us need to understand we've had multitudes of people that have had influences in our lives for good. And we need to thank God for those that did influence us for good. And we need to be influencing others for good. No man is on what? No man is an island. No man's alone. No woman's alone. No man's raised himself. No man has fed himself. You know, I, I just had the thought, doctors. Have doctors ever helped any of you? I'm talking about really helped any of you? Has medicine ever really helped any of you? All those doctors and all those people that helped you when you had physical sick sickness, God was behind all of that. But you need to remember to thank God for those people that influenced your life and helped you physically. So the centurion Cornelius, he was a man that served God, loved God, and obeyed God, and it was him and all his house. Many, many other examples. You remember, uh, the thought just came to my mind about the uh, Philippian uh, jailer. You remember when uh, Paul and Silas were put in prison, and they began to sing and praise God? How do you think those two men, when they were put in prison, could be singing and praising God? It's because a lot of people had influenced them all their lives. They knew how to respond to trouble in their lives. They knew that when trouble came, they knew God still loved them even though they were in prison. They had been taught that. They had been instructed that. They had seen other people that when they were suffering, they trusted in God. So now Paul and Silas are in prison and they're praising God and praying and giving glory to God. And God opened the doors of the prison and that jailer and all his house is the wording there. The jailer and all his house. They were converted and were baptized. Now you think it was just that jailer that all of a sudden or do you think that there were a lot of people in that jailer's life who had had a profound influence and Paul and Silas had a profound influence on him also. You're influencing people every day of your life. And every, every day of your life there are people that are influencing you too. And you need to be careful about who you're around. All of you young people, I want you to be careful about who you're around. Because you can be influenced for evil or you can be influenced for good. If you're not careful, you can be influenced for evil. I mentioned a wife. I've already mentioned grandparents and parents. And I've mentioned strong men that them and their whole household served the Lord. Those good daddies, they had a profound influence on their children and grandchildren. But wives have a great influence on their husbands. And husbands can have a great influence on their wives. My daddy and mama influenced me in a lot of ways. But I'm telling you, I'm 70 something years old. And my wife has had more influence on me. She's been together with me longer. But she's had more influence on me than even my parents did. And it's always been good influence. 
As I look over this congregation, I think every man here could say, God gave me a good wife to influence me for good. And I hope you women will be gracious and say, God gave me a husband and I hope he'll influence me for good. I think all of us can influence others, especially our husbands and wives. That's taught very clearly here in 1 Corinthians chapter 7 beginning in verse 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 how a husband can have a profound influence on his wife and a wife can have a profound influence on her husband. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 beginning in verse 12. The word of God says, But to the rest speak I, not the Lord. If any brother hath a wife that believeth not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. And the woman which hath an husband that believeth not, and if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. For the unbelieving husband is, what's the next word there? The unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife. Do you see the influence for good that the unbelieving husband had from his wife? The unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband else were your children unclean but now are they holy we all as husbands and wives we need to we need to be a positive influence on our spouses we need to love them we need to show that love we need to encourage them we need to support them I'm going to mention pastors back up one page in your Bible and I, I suppose that probably I could name you at least 20 old preachers that had a profound influence on my life because we had a lot of those preachers in our home when, used to when you had a week's meeting and you had use, usually at least one to three weeks meetings a year and they would start on Tuesday night and they would go Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, Wednesday night, Thursday morning, Thursday night. It was morning and night from Tuesday night through Sunday night. And so the preachers stayed with the host pastor. And I remember many, many, many nights after I was told to go to bed and the preachers would be up studying. I remember laying there at the door trying to listen to them discussing God's holy word. I learned a lot just from all those preachers that stayed in our home. And I got close to them. And I would ask them questions. And even after I got into the ministry, I had probably 15 pastors that I would periodically call when I had a question about a scripture. Or how do I deal with this situation? And I would try to get wise counsel from godly men. All of those preachers had a positive influence in my life. They weren't all perfect. Nobody in this building is perfect. Nobody that you ever meet is perfect. Your parents aren't perfect. Your grandparents. And you can sit back and look at all their flaws or you can thank God. They have, a, they have a lot of good qualities too. And you can thank God for the good influence they've had in your life. 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 15. The word of God says, this is Paul writing to the church at Corinth. And by the way. Anybody here, tell me anything you know that Paul said to this church at Corinth that you think might have hurt their feelings. Is there anything that Paul wrote in this first letter to the saints at Corinth, the church at Corinth? Is there anything that Paul said to the church at Corinth that might have hurt their feelings? Name anything, Brother Philip. Name one. One thing was church discipline. They had a man that was uh, having relations with his father's wife. And they were doing nothing about it and boasting about it and glad they wouldn't judge. And they grabbed hope of Jesus' word, judge not that you be not judged. And used that as an excuse not to follow what God's word says. So they were guilty of not carrying out church discipline. He rebuked them sharply for that. What else was another problem in the church at Corinth that Paul corrected them about? Division. There were divisions in the church. They were... They were divided, there were schisms and divisions in the body. And he addressed the problem, and he talked about the problem, and he told them they had to straighten that out. There was another problem, that when they got together for communion, they got drunk off of the wine. Now he addressed the issues. You go home and read all of 1 Corinthians, and you'll find out 
Paul loved the church at Corinth probably more than any other man loved the church at Corinth. And it was because of Paul's love for the church at Corinth that he would have to address the issues that would destroy the church if they were not corrected. So when Paul wrote this letter, he was very careful and very explicit in writing down every problem, every major problem the church had. And they corrected those issues. Paul loved them. In 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 15, Paul said to this church, he says, For though ye have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers. In other words, you don't have a lot of, you can have a lot of people that teach you the Bible, but you don't have a lot of people that teach you the Bible that love you so much that they'll, they're willing to become your enemy just to try to straighten you out. You don't have many fathers like that. A good father's going to straighten out his family, straighten out his children. Me, let me go to, to one other example of people that influence us, and that's good friends. Do good friends influence you? Tell me, and, and there are a lot of examples in the scriptures, tell me anybody in, you, in the Bible that you know of that were really, really good friends. Name any good friends in the Bible. David and Jonathan, two of the greatest, that's, that's one of the greatest examples of two friends. And David influenced Jonathan for good, and Jonathan influenced David for good, and they loved each other. I'm going to tell you, brethren, one of the greatest blessings we have as children of God is to have brothers and sisters in Christ that truly, genuinely love each other. No man liveth unto himself, and no man dieth unto himself. You withdraw yourself, you withdraw yourself from other families and other people. You get out there and isolate yourself and you try to be an island and you're going to perish. You cannot, as a child of God, you cannot isolate yourself. Uh, go with me in closing to 1 Samuel chapter 18 and we'll just mention David and Jonathan right here. Because I want everybody here to know that you need good friends. You choose your friends. I don't choose, I didn't choose who my parents were. I didn't choose who my sister is. I didn't choose who my children are. I'm glad for all of them. They're all a great blessing, but I'm telling you, choosing friends is extremely important. You better be careful about the friends that you choose. In 1 Samuel chapter 18 and verse 1, the Word of God talks about the importance of friendship and how Friends can have a positive influence in our lives, a good influence. They can be chief friends. I'll tell you, I've got a lot of chief friends. 1 Samuel chapter 18 verse 1, the word of God says, And it came to pass, when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul, that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. That expression about Jonathan and David loving each other as their own soul, that expression is used several times in the Word of God. In fact, the Word of God says that their love exceeded the love of women. In other words, they were closer in friendship to each other than they were to any woman on the face of the earth. Good friends are a great, great blessing. And we need to pray that God will help us to choose our friends wisely. And all of you parents, you're responsible for helping your children choose the right friends. May God help us all to understand no man liveth unto himself and no man dieth unto himself. And all of us are being influenced and all of us are influencing others. May God help us to do what's right in his sight is my prayer for Christ's sake. Amen. When we walk